Welcome back, guys. Thanks for hanging out. We're going to look at another UFO video. I want to debunk one today that kind of went viral recently on a bunch of social media platforms. I saw it on Twitter. It's been posted five days ago on Reddit. It's got almost 2,000 upvotes, so people are fascinated with it. It is a classic in a way. It's been originally shared in 2008, and I did find the original upload. Okay, I'm going to mute the music because it's absolutely, absolutely horrible. So I'll link this down in the description. It's been uploaded by a channel called Radar1919. I'm sure that's not the original author of the video, but that's the oldest uh, copy on YouTube that I could find. It's 14 years old. So here it says, recorded on Sunday, July 13th, 2008, and it shows a silver orb. Let's take a look. But before we do, don't forget to smash the like button, okay? Too many of you come through here, watch the video, and then forget to smash like. Show some love to the YouTube algorithm. It will then recognize that you're enjoying this content. Let's get into the video. So what we can see is, fortunately, both, both uh, versions of the video, the one on YouTube and on Reddit, don't have audio. But what we can see is a silvery orb with what seems to be like a black line going around the center. And it seems to be like embossed into it, right? So it's not like a black stripe that's printed on the outside of the sphere. It looks like you can almost make out like some detail here and some detail there that seems to be sunken into the sphere, right? Which is quite interesting. So it's almost like two semicircles stuck together with a little, I don't know, return in the middle, if you want to describe it like that. So the video is fairly long. It is 2 minutes 12. So I think it is fair to assume that it's probably not uh, CGI or something, especially also considering that it's from 2008. Not saying that you could not achieve footage like this in 2008 using CGI, but especially what we see here in the beginning, really, I mean, it does not look like CGI to me. Also, like just the lighting and the texture on some of the object, just it really looks physical, okay? Again, you can have bump maps, as they call them, and, you know, textures on 3D objects that give it more physicality, that kind of displace part of the, the surfaces and give it that kind of effect that we're seeing here. But again, in 2008, the camera movement, the whole thing feels rather authentic to me. And, and now we're seeing this close-up there, and it gives you even a bit more detail zooming into this little ledge or indentation that goes around the sphere there. Again, the, the scratches on the bottom, it has that physicality. Now, something happened, right? You can see we're almost looking at it from a different camera perspective. Suddenly, the leaves are much bigger. The camera is zoomed out much more. And previously, we didn't even see that it is leaves. It was just like black abstract shapes that were obstructing part of the object. But it looks slightly different now. And when I was looking at this part of the footage, up until this point, I was convinced it's a physical object. It's definitely real in front of the camera, whatever it is. But the person who filmed it, it was filming a real object. It's not CGI. But what I noticed here, and I want to go slightly back to show you guys, is... Look at the leaves. Now we can really see the branches and the leaves. None of them move. Do you notice this? Not a single leaf moves in the wind. Not a single branch does any type of movement. Here you see it as well. Like as soon as the camera goes sharp here in a second, you'll notice there's no movement. There is no movement in these branches. I mean, it might have just been a really wind still day, okay, with no wind whatsoever, but that's very, very unlikely. So again, up until the end of this, this video, I was kind of a believer in it being real, not necessarily alien, but being a real object. But then this happened. Okay, let's look at that again. Um, let's, let's bring that up again. So the object kind of shoots off into the distance to the left. And bro, that, that's where all my CGI alarm bells went off. Okay, I'm not necessarily CGI. I mean, it might have been an object that's been composited not necessarily in the 3D software, but composited behind those trees. But the way it shoots off into the distance, it just it just looks completely off. Okay, then but then again, I mean you can make the argument and say, well, you don't know how an alien sphere would look if it shoots off into the distance. But if you look frame by frame at this footage and just look how it moves. I mean, look, I, I'm not a crazy camera expert or whatever. Maybe feel free to correct me down in the comments, right? If you think that's how an object that moves very fast out of frame would behave. But this looks to me like some compositing software had an image there and then you kind of instructed the image to move very quickly to the side. And then you create these kind of overlaps here. It, it just looks irregular. It's, it's weird that it has this interlaced effect over the object uh, as soon as it moves. So it looks very, very much like some kind of digital effect to me. But that's not everything. It took me a few times of looking at this footage to actually realize another major inconsistency. The first half of the footage, or not exactly the half, but the first part of the footage, you see it's, it seems very like a physical object. 
but it's a static object, right? It's a static object that hangs in the sky. It moves slightly to the left, which could also be camera movement, right? If you move the camera, you would get this effect that these alleged branches or whatever move to the left there as well. But later, as soon as we switch to this second footage at the, what is it, 126 mark, the color of the object slightly changes. Do you notice this? It now has more like of a greenish sheen to it. And suddenly the bottom of the object is rotating. Do you see this? Suddenly, I mean, it could also be the reflection, right? It could be something on the ground that moves and reflects in the sphere. But suddenly also the texture of how the light and everything looks on this sphere is significantly different from how it looks on this sphere. Do you see this? If we jump back and forth between these two objects, it's, it seems to be not exactly the same. The reflection is different. Presumably, this is not a different day where the lighting conditions uh, would be the same. I mean, even the title it says it was that specific day at 9.42 a.m. Uh, in the UK. So it's supposed to be shot within a short time frame, yet the object looks completely different in terms of its reflection and light. Also, it just doesn't make a lot of sense that there's so much green reflection, considering it's a silvery object, right? So it's silvery, it should reflect the environment around it, which kind of makes sense here. Like that lighting is kind of consistent. It's like a bluish, silverish reflection in the object, which again makes me think this is real. But back here, suddenly it's green. It's like especially the upper part of the sphere should be bluish. You know, it reflects the sky. That's what it should reflect. So it makes no sense. So it's really interesting. So my theory is that these are two pieces of footage. The first part is some kind of styrofoam object or whatever the material is that the dude or the person who filmed this hung and suspended from a fishing wire. This is a real object. That's also why the bottom doesn't rotate. Okay? It doesn't, doesn't make sense. This is a real object that's floating in the sky. You get all the detail. It has the indentations, the imperfections of the material, right? It's like basically you've got like a styrofoam a sphere, cut it in half, plonked a bit styrofoam in the middle, sprayed it with silver or whatever, suspended it in the air. That's the effect you're getting. It looks real. It looks, it has the correct reflections. It ticks all the boxes. But then at 126, when it switches to the, to the slightly different footage, uh, which is around here, this is digital. I, that's my theory, at least. Feel free to correct me down in the comments, right? But I think we've just switched to completely different footage. That's also why the branches don't move at all. These branches are static because it's basically it's like some kind of alpha map, right? Like in the sense that it's it's just a black map with some parts being transparent, a black pattern, and then due to the to the uh, field of depth, right? The, the sh lack of sharpness on the leaves and the whole footage, I mean, the best you can get is 480p. You get this effect. So the second half of this footage is... Digital, it's my theory, this whole part where also the reflection doesn't look right because at that time it was not too common to use HDMI maps which basically in simulate the environment around it then you place the sphere in it and would reflect that environment. So he messed up a few things there. I think this is a digital recreation of the first part and he just edited it together to give the impression of it being one, one film and one sighting, which is super interesting to me, especially given the time of 2008. And if you read the comments underneath, a lot of people are not noticing this, right? It's, they don't notice that these seem to be two different pieces of footage. And that also, in terms of it being digital, makes suddenly sense that the bottom of the object is rotating in the second clip. And even like the, the center here, right? Look at this. I just noticed this now. These I don't know, small indentations or whatever in the center of the sphere here in that ring that goes around, they rotate as well. Don't know if the whole sphere is rotating or just the bottom, but that's stuff you can do when, when you have a digital object. So the fly-off moment looks digital, the rotation looks digital, the leaves look digital, the reflection is messed up, which fits the digital as well. So loads going on here, but I think we can confidently say it's not aliens, they're for... Okay, another one, another one down the drain. However, there's more to this. There's a little bit more to this story, so don't run, don't run away yet, okay? Because there's a famous painting by René Magritte, okay? I'm sure you're familiar with René Magritte. This is one of his very famous artworks, okay? C'est no une bonne pipe. I don't know what it says, I don't speak French, but I guess it means this is not a pipe. There's also this one, there's another one where the pigeon flies past the guy's head and is always covering his face. He's a famous painter, you know, from the early 20th century. And he painted this painting in 1931. It is called The Voice of Space. And it looks almost identical, like the objects in this painting look almost identical. I think he painted a few of those. The Wikipedia page says that there are four oil versions existing of this image. But again, I think how this links to the sighting, the video we just looked at, 
Probably the guy who created this is a bit of an art lover, okay? And maybe, maybe this fake UFO video that he created, a half digital, half real one, the one that we looked at in the beginning, is basically an ode to this piece of work. And it would lend a little bit more credibility. It would add to the story, right? If people would suddenly see spheres like that, people would come forward and say, well, this is just like the René Magritte, the voice of space. And suddenly it has the potential to create a life of its own and become more than just that film. So my theory is that whoever created the film, whoever faked, hoaxed this video, was an art fan, was a fan of René Magritte, and he saw this painting and he was like, you know what, this looks pretty cool. Let me try to recreate this in a film and maybe create a bit of pop culture out there. That's, that's what I think. That's my theory, okay? It's a cool story. It's a beautiful video. I love that it links to the painting, that it's split in the middle to be half digital, half real. I love all of that. I think it's really fascinating. But again, it is kind of going viral at the moment. You see lots of posts on, it on social media. So I felt I wanted to explain what's going on. Guys, if you enjoyed the video and learned something, then subscribe to the channel, okay, for more. I do more of these videos. There's a whole playlist of what feels like a million videos at this point that I do this thing. Also, please don't forget to smash the like button. You can join our Discord, lovely community. I'm hanging out there, lots of other people hang out there. The link is in the description, so please click it, join the community. I would love to meet you there. And you can tell me personally, what do you think of my videos? I would appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching. I see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and I'm out, bye.